Hey there, it's Joe Lines from the Automator, and it's another episode of what we automated this week with AutoHotKey. Let me go over and switch screens. Uh, I think I already adjusted my DPI. Yeah, that's a higher DPI. Tools. Except modified AutoHotKey files. This, by the way, this is a cool tool because it, it, it's looping across all of our files and then has a preview in the site view which allows for the IntelliSense, which is really handy, so I don't have to go open the files and I can get a nice preview of them. 145 files, boy, that's a lot. I think what happened is we moved a lot of our radiologist files into a subfolder so we can organize them by kind of what the clients do, and we have a lot of clients that are radiologists, so I don't. Um, this number I think is a little higher than normal because I just moved a bunch of files. Anyway, so yeah, our one client, we're doing a lot of stuff for them, automating their the software and also we're doing other stuff for them like helping them create their webinars helping them publish the webinars in different languages using ai for that um doing a crazy amount of stuff this morning they have a bunch of abs files it's an absolute database if i remember right file and uh it was interesting was i was using claude to figure out how to open these files and talk about the delphi um environment this and that but i didn't know that the delphi environment is is similar to the windows environment and you can actually run the stuff from windows so um, i was able to download a tool to open the the databases unfortunately they're password protected and so um, we're going to ask the client if we can get that password um if not we might you know just try to brute force read it we're just trying to get data act out of the tool to see what's there um to help us in in our automations we're not trying to do anything nefarious we just want to be able to peek inside it so we can better automate the tool um, hopefully we can do that without too much work uh, anyway um, we've been doing a lot of stuff with claude for our client our client they had a lot of data based on words and they had manually put together these things and they had hundreds if not thousands more to do manually and i said why don't we uh take those terms give it examples that you have you've already done shove them into an ai like claude and ask it to come up with them and so we did one as an example and provided the client, and she thought they were amazing. So she said, go ahead and go back and do all of them. So we went back and we ripped um, all of the terms that she had done and asked them to review it. And it came up with a bunch of stuff that now she is um, reviewing with her and another doctor to, to see what they should be. But it's a really, really cool example um, to use AI to speed up what you're doing. Um, the human is still going to review it and make sure it makes sense, but it's so much easier than it is to edit than it is to create, right? So, um, and this, we're creating a print report. Uh, as I mentioned before, they couldn't export from their tools. Really crazy. They'd have to look at the screen, write things down, and then literally write them down. Um, and then sometimes there's hundreds of things that they have to write down and then meet with their clients and discuss them. Now it's all tracked for them and exports it. Uh, it actually generates an HTML file, which then we go to print and pre creates a really pretty PDF um, view of what the report had. It leaves some space to write, and it also automatically inserts like the client name, inserts the date it was done on, so you don't have to manually do any of that stuff. So it's very cool, saving them a lot of time, and of course reducing a lot of human error, um, including we're, bring, we're binding in. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, and I can't show the data because it's all privileged, but imagine you have a list of thousands of tests and certain tests you know on each case with the client let's say a um, hundred um, and there's different tests but across the ten tests there's um, five on each report where the, they score higher or low and, and, and it's outside the bounds right so on those five the ones that are scoring higher or low that's when you want to say okay well let's append this other data that the client created and now with AI helping um, so we have more information so people can review them. And so that's what she was also doing in her head. And now we're binding that data for them together uh, and then putting it all into that print report so they can pass along with the client. So it's saving a crazy amount of time. We, we also brought over like our automator spy, which is really cool. I'll have to create a video now that's been updated. Um, and there's one more I want to do. Let me actually launch it. So um, I can't easily demo the, the thing that we updated. But let's say if I'm in here and I hit my right control key, and that one, that's one of the things we're going to build is you can choose your, your hot key instead of us defining it for you. But this, and this one, unfortunately, this doesn't have, it, there's nowhere where there's a bunch of text, but sometimes this text is a lot of text, right, depending on the program you're connecting to. And I thought, hey, you know what would be cool is that we list it all, but what if we had a search here that would allow you to filter and say, did you find this word? Because we'll have that for, for definitely this one. This one, 
Um, I don't think this one we would ever need that, and I don't think the saddest part, but these two, I think being able to search for it would be great. Um, and here now, also, when we select all here and copy, it breaks them all, puts sounds on the quotes, and then it allows you to paste. So let me bring over a notepad and go see what I mean here. So now, and also I want to be able to say, well, do you want double quotes around that or single quotes, right? But um, if you just select one of these and copy, it, it's just going to quote that one, right? So it's very cool. That's flattening it for you. Um, and here you have the PID, which I can still click, and it will give it to me. But we rarely use those, and so this way we can come in here, select all, um, go paste, or just get the first one and paste. And it makes it very easy to get that. But also, when this file, and this is it Notepad? No, um, it's the newer version of Notepad. I don't have that. I use the older version. But um, it was when there's a Unicode character in here, now it actually highlights that weird Unicode character so you understand you really should copy and paste. Um, oh, look at that, the PID still. Oh, maybe it's because my DPI, I bumped over my DPI, the PID is off the screen. Um, so maybe we should just plan to put that on the next line um, so it fits. Or, and, and I know I asked Orphan to fix this, remove the and to use an ampersand there. Or just say... I don't think we need to spell all this out. People know what would be there. But um, right now, that's going off the screen, and you'd want to be able to see that. So that is a little tweak we'll have to do. Uh, again, it probably gets taken care of when um, the DPI... Now, this is interesting. It says DPI is 100, but I know it's not. Let me... Let me click this again. Yeah, that's funny. Um, that is incorrect. We'll have to fix that, because I know I'm running it a different DPI. So not sure what happened there. Let me try it on... No, it's on. Yeah. Here. Yeah, so, um, got a bug there, guys, um, that should have been telling us that the DPI is actually off. It's not at 100%, uh, which is helpful sometimes in understanding what you're looking at. So, uh, this is a cool idea. When they were running their programs, often they're running automations at night because people want to use their computer in the day. And then this tool, unfortunately, because of how the tool is built, it, you can't be using your computer while it's running. And what would happen is sometimes the Windows update happens at night. And so um, the people come back in the morning and their automations didn't work because the Windows update started to happen and a new screen popped up while the program automation was running and breaking it. And so uh, I wrote a little bit of stuff and was testing it. It does seem to work to turn off and turn on, enable, disable the Windows update. Um, so that seems to work. So we're probably going to build this into a, a preference for the client end clients to say, hey, do you want to disable Windows updates while our automations are running, right? So this would be an easy thing to include in that and have it as a preference. Again, Jeff, we're doing a lot of stuff with him on the um, tool we're building for him. It's massive. Um, that's as he does his stuff in the afternoons. We also did some work for Steve, a buddy of mine, and... Um, we're using this get Chrome quick. I don't know if we posted that download. We got to post that download, but it makes it easier. Now it still requires um, you to have a, a DL, I think a DLL or an executable on your computer, but we can easily get the Chrome cookies uh, from a browser. And that allows us to switch over to doing um, API calls straight up instead of automating a browser. So um, that's a great example. We borrowed from Rafadium and make it easier to get those cookies because that can be an annoying thing, and now it's very simple for us to get the cookies from Chrome. That way you log in with your browser, and then our tool switches over doing API calls in the background, not automating the browser, but we don't try to authenticate with the API calls, so it takes care of that. Apparently doing some little work for Thomas. Um, yeah, I hear all the radiologist stuff, and, and for Danny, you can see, because I moved all those stuff, there's a lot of stuff we've done for him. Um, and as Ace builds in the test, I think these are part of the tests and things. Oh, well, that's our notify class, sorry. But um, a lot of work for Danny. And that, that was one of the ones that I moved, which makes up a lot of these files. Again, this week we did a lot of just, um, we're only doing client work at this point. We haven't been able to catch up. We did minor updates. Let's see. Um, I was doing a couple things in studio. Um, Texas speech, this one, our... I realized our library was in a different spot, so I updated it to be the accurate spot. Because uh, I was trying to do, a, I was doing a, a call with a friend of mine. She wanted to learn about AI and, and how it could help her. And I'm like, here, look at this one where you can type and it will talk for you. 
and um, the script didn't work. And I realized it's because we moved where our class was, the OpenAI class. So I, I updated that. But now it's pretty cool. You can um, type what you want, and it will speak it or create an MP3 file, it looks like here, and then play it. But it's really cool. You can generate text of what you want spoken in, and it's just far better than the built-in Windows Sappy control. Inscribe Media. So this tool is really cool. We're getting close where we can release it, but it um it allows us to transcribe a given video or audio file and um, search in the subtitles and um, summarize it, but also extract video or audio files from it, uh, depending on what you select. It's very, very cool. And uh, it does require a lot of um, AI classes, uh, sorry, tokens. And so that's going to be trying to make it where we don't have to teach our clients how to go create a token because it's a little technical and most people don't want to bother even learn that. So we might um, just build the wrap it around where we control all that. And then we just charge you the price of the, the amount of tokens you use or something like that. Um, that's a lot more complicated, but it's complicated on our end and not for our users, right? So that's what we're trying to do. Um, let's see, final sample. Not sure what that is. Um, but this translate. This is where we 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 get. Oh, actually. So now I remember. We, um, our then our our client, um, a bio life uh, client. They have videos that were. Some of them were like an hour and a half or two hours long, and they wanted them to. They're all in English, but they wanted them available in French and Spanish. The tool would <coughs> break it into chunks, uh, which allows it to transcribe the audio. And unfortunately, in this translate and subtitle tool, we hadn't done that yet. So Isaiah's had to port that breaking into pieces. And this way now, if we have a six hour video, it doesn't matter. It breaks them into smaller chunks, converts them to an OGG file, sends it over for transcription, and then transcribes it for you, um, and then pulls it all in. This tool actually will allow you to then check a language that you want to choose, and it will burn um, it converts, it translates that audio file, um, tra transcribes it first, then translates it, and then burns it back into the video um, for you. Or it can create the SRT files, and you can just use those. But most people, we just say, just burn it into the video. And so it's really cool is we're able to create subtitles in other languages. So we instantly, ha uh, instantly, it takes um, about the length of the video. If your hour video is an hour long, it takes about an hour for it to do it. Because we got to do all the trans transcribe, translate, then re-render the video. Uh, but it's pretty cool because you can get it your your videos and other available in other languages with subtitles at least. So very cool. Um, uh, this was all with that. Clipboard history tool. Um, Thomas, a hero member, was documenting some errors he was having with it. So Erfian yesterday was updating a couple of those things. Just to, um, they were minor tweaks, but he, he fixed a couple bugs with that. Our clip share tool again we haven't shared that yet but it allows us to share the clipboard across computers um so i can copy and as as can paste or vice versa we can also message each other with it which is kind of interesting it's effortless video reducer we've been adding to that and i thought of i want to add a new um i forget what it's called um vrc in the ffmpeg tool but it basically allows you to choose your comp the compression level and that will allow us to have another dimension of how compressed you want it right now we just chose um but the arbitrary the numbers are very arbitrary and hard to understand so our tool is going to just present you three options and this way it will only have a, a drop down you choose you know small medium and and large or, or something like that right of how much compression you use so it'd be very cool with that I was just dabbling with, I downloaded a file, it was a web WP file, and I'm like, this is dumb, like, because a lot of the tools can't use WP, so I thought, hey, can FFmpeg convert it? Now, this script isn't actually working, but I did just get the FFmpeg syntax, and when I wrote it with the syntax, that converted it to a PNG for me straight away. Um, this code was very close, but didn't quite work, but, but it was close, so we'll finish that up. And then we'll make it where, hey, you can take any, almost probably any type of image file and convert it to, you know, whatever type of file you want. Um, and then we'll have that in a loop, of course, so we can loop over all the files you want and easily convert files in different formats. Because uh, uh, that FFmpeg is just a monster of how amazing it is. Um, during, was it the hero call? Yeah. 
um, Isaiah realized we were borrowing from our concept of use, having an editable grid, and we realized a couple of our functions that we used weren't in the Excel V2 function class. So we, we put those in there. Um, let me go to the bottom here. I think they were at the very bottom. Which I don't know why that just jumped back to the top. That was interesting. This resize wasn't there. The toggle captions and um, toggle bars. So that allows you to, to enable um, the, the ribbon or this one maybe. What was the top one here? Indra? What is that? I don't know what this is. Oh, is it? Our Irfan actually explained that to me. That was an, and that's what's weird is there's nothing breaking here. There should be something over here between. But this execute VBA allows us to execute strings, uh, but it's very cool. So we added that we updated our Excel function library. Um, that's a great class. Uh, What's well, sorry function that um, has a lot of functions in it that allows you to do a lot of easy stuff with Excel. So you might check that out. We had a client call where he was doing stuff in. SharePoint, and so I was explaining to him that I, I years ago at TI had a bunch of stuff in SharePoint, and this is old, really, really old. But um, I had learned how to use the API calls with SharePoint, and so um, I was just playing around with that. One of which was he was having problems when he was trying to do a certain type of request, and it's because he had to pass it credentials. And uh, I mentioned, hey, I found a, a way to in an API call to use your Windows login credentials. So if you're on like an enterprise system and you log into your computer, you can pass those credentials along. And often, like, and actually he reported back it did work. So that was very cool that we were able to help him. We also it was like an hour long call where we we're giving him tutorials and doing API calls. Um, but I had done a lot of them years ago. Prompt assistant Isaiah did some updates on his computer and the Windows update, and suddenly prompt assistant for him working. So it's it's we're we're still not sure what the problem is. It's something with the DLL call and he can't access the file. Yeah. But he's he's been working on it. Um, and here are just a, a couple more. Oh, I was playing with. I know somewhere I had updated how to grab subtitles, and um, I was trying to find it. Scott, one of the hero members, had asked, and then he actually used he solved it. Um, but I, I know I had solved it and put it somewhere, and I'm just trying to find it. And he back passwords. Yeah, that sounds like a good title. This we were actually just testing. Um, can you do a brute force attack to try different passwords? And so I was uh, playing with that. Um, this download verse 404. Uh, it was interesting during the hero call. We documented how our tool was using the download command, built in command, and it was actually breaking, and we didn't realize it was breaking. And so I had Irfan explain why using the download command directly in there doesn't allow to you to do certain things. And one of it was understanding that you were actually getting redirected, but you didn't know you were because it's all done behind the scenes. With a WinHP request, you can tell it to prevent redirects. Um, so this this a option six pre can prevent redirects, and then you can do tell you can actually tell if you got a 404. The download command it was actually getting a 404 and then redirecting us to a new URL, but we didn't know it because it still gave us an answer and it gave us a 200, but um, in reality it wasn't. So I told Irfi, and that's why, you know, both the X9 almost never use those built-in commands because there's so much more control. Um, and so here we were downloading a file, but it was giving us the wrong file. So anyway, we docked it up the hero call. Yeah, here's one I was I was playing with also of just how to get the... the transcripts for a given video and I know I found a very simple way to do it and I'm just trying to find the one I already did because it was really easy and it was um, you didn't have to have any credentials you can get it for any channel whether it's your channel or someone else's channel and so I thought hey you know it'd be cool let's get those subtitles for any video you can get the the ID of the video and then we can get the subtitles and then we can summarize the video without um, you click a button and it'll go grab those subtitles so we don't do the transcription. Let's go ahead and borrow what's there and then we can summarize it. So we'll have a very cool tool running on your computer that will very quickly summarize a video and give you kind of chapters to jump to if they don't already have those. So hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. We've been doing a lot of client work and uh, we had another request come through yesterday. It was a pretty big one, but we're getting busy. And if you guys want us to help you automate what you're doing. I mean, the Hero Group's a great program because you can go there three hours a week. We have times that you can be there and ask questions on how to do stuff when we often help point you in the right direction or solve the issues you're having. 
but um, we also do done for you work. And so let me know if you're interested in our, our guys can do it in a fraction of the time. I can basically guarantee you that if you're, you know, if you're not an auto hockey programmer and don't want to be, um, we, we are by far, our guys are the best there are. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. Cheers.